Ready? Sounds good. Hey skiers, I'm Jeff from SkiEssentials.com. I'm Bob. How's it going? Uh, Bob and here, Bob and I are here today to do our first 2020 ski comparison video. Um, pretty exciting. I know you guys all really like these comparisons. They're pretty fun for us to do too. Uh, we set up this studio wall a couple days ago actually, mm -hmm. and kind of sent out a general message to our entire company, like, hey, there's 17 different all mountain skis up on the wall. A uh, really cool opportunity to kind of go through them and, and look at the differences ourselves yeah. um, and, and really fun for you guys to kind of do the same thing uh, through through the lens, so to speak. Yeah. Um, so as these are pretty long videos, we're going to just kind of dive right into it. Um, we will be doing a series of these comparison videos throughout the fall. They'll probably go until December even yeah. um, with some reviews mixed in there as well. So we'll start right now, and I guess one more thing before, before we really get going. This is 17 skis. We had to cut it somewhere um, for length and just studio space. Um, we're basically maxing out the, what we can fit on our wall here. So if there is a ski that you don't see, don't hesitate to ask us yeah. about it. Chances are we wanted to include it and just had to, had to leave some stuff out. So we'll get started. Um, I'll kick it off here with the Atomic Vantage 90 Ti. Really cool ski, um, and I think it's kind of an interesting one to start with. Um, the Vantage is one of the lightest skis on this wall. It's extremely light when you hold it in their hand. We talked about the construction in depth in our review, um, but it's very, very lightweight, and it's also quite stiff. Um, and, and what that basically does is a ski that's very light and very stiff becomes very, very responsive. Um, so we love this ski for its energetic feel, um, its responsiveness on a groomer, its precision really in any terrain um, that responds to that skier input very quickly and, and very precise. Um, it's also, because it's light, it's a little bit less fatiguing than some yeah, of the other definitely. skis on this wall. You know, we'll get to some skis that are, are pretty heavy, especially when you hold one in one hand and this in the other yeah. hand. Um, so not only does that make it a little bit less fatiguing, it also makes it a little easier to pivot. Um, this isn't, doesn't use a lot of rocker, doesn't use a lot of early taper, but what it's got going for it is that light swing weight. Yeah. So when you get it into a tight spot, you know, you might not feel a super slarvy, smeary turn, but what you're getting is, is a really quick feeling um, and, and really nice feedback out of the ski too. So Vantage 90 Ti, really cool one. Uh, we have a full review of this, so if you want to learn more about it, you certainly can. And that brings us to a staple of this category. Yeah, the Brahma has been around for a few years now. Most skiers out there are familiar with it. Um, and one thing I'd add is to, that's fun to look at this is the general tip shape of all these skis. Sure. So Jeff's, advan Jeff's Vantage there, um, as well as this Brahma, pretty flattened off uh, the Vantage more so. That leads to a lower swing weight because it takes weight uh, off of the tip of the ski. Um, Brahma 88 is much more of a traditional construction, two sheets of metal, wood core. Uh, this thing likes to go fast. Um, you know, I'm 6'2", 220 pounds, and I, like, I might ski the 180 in this versus the 187, just because that 187 is, can be a handful. Um, really lights it up once it hits about 40 miles an hour is where, you, yeah. where your target speed for this ski is. Um, pretty traditional shape. Uh, front to back, some good, some good some sound good. to it, some good stiffness to it. Yeah. Um, you know, the uh, bi-directional carbon in the tips and tails really help make it a little bit more user friendly. Yeah. But in general, uh, we're looking at a, you know, an on-trail, more specific versus off-trail. Uh, can do anything. Yep. Uh, definitely requires a pretty skilled pilot, and um, you know. The more energy you put in, the more energy you get out, especially yeah. at speed. And kind of a good one to talk about right after the Vantage, because yeah. there's a hold huge, together. huge weight yeah. difference here. And, you know, in my opinion, they're both very precise, high-end, all-mountain skis. Yeah. Um, but one, you get tons of responsiveness, and one, you get, in my opinion, more vibration damping, yeah. more stability, yeah. and stuff like that, but it's heavier. 
Right. Um, so that brings us to the next ski, the Blizzard Rustler 9. Uh, great one to talk about after the Brahma, and you know, this is we've talked about this plenty of times before. Oh, the whole series. Um, basically, yeah. the Brahma is kind of your firmer snow, all mountain ski, really powerful, two sheets of metal, bi directional carbon. This has a partial sheet of metal that ends at the tips and tails, uh, much more rocker in the tips and tails, and it's unidirectional carbon fiber. So, much different ski here. Um, definitely more geared to that soft snow skier. Maybe you just have more of a playful skiing style. Um, you know, every time I get on this ski, I want to like find little jumps and little hits yeah. on the side of the trail and jump off them and do little shifties and little tricks like that. Much, much more that style of ski than the Brahma 88. Yeah. Um, so it's really nice because within Blizzard's line, maybe you're or just a big fan of Blizzard skis, you can choose. Brahma 88, Rustler 9, a pretty similar width, 88 to 94 actually, I believe this is the widest ski on this wall right now, uh, but yeah, huge uh, huge soft snow and kind of free ride influence in this ski, but what's nice about it is it's still, you know, especially this portion of the ski, it still feels like like a blizzard, yeah. it's still, it's got that Austrian heritage to it, so it can still definitely lay over some pretty powerful turns. Um, but yeah, in general, I think it's just a good way to think about the Rustler 9 is it's like they take the Brahma and just make it significantly more right. playful. Yeah, definitely. Um, really fun. Really, it's, I'd say it's got more energy out of a turn. Yeah, I was just about um, to add that energetic. Yep, fun, feel, snappy. Sure. Um, but yeah, it's, it's cool because you can still, still kind of drive some turns when you want to on it. This is our first uh, over $1,000 ski. Which is that's fun. Going to be a theme <laughs> here, somewhat. Um, yeah, DPS Cassiar uh, 87 with the Alchemist construction. So that is their wood core with two sheets of carbon on top and bottom. Um, so wood and carbon are your only materials in here. And what that does is it gives it just an insanely precise feel. Yep. So carbon is really good at transmitting energy. Yep. And so every bit of movement you put into the ski gets really translated to the edge very quickly. Um, I would say that this is the roundest tip shape on the wall here. Uh, DPS can get away with it because that carbon is so light. They don't need to chop the top off of a ski in order to get better swing weight. Um, generally pretty, pretty cambered, um, and that's what they're looking for because this, tr this ski is definitely meant for more on-trail snow. Um, firmer snow, you're going to get really good edge grip, really good stability out of it for being just an absolute feather. Yeah. Um, and, you know, you get a little bit of flex out of it, but for how light it is, it's pretty stiff. Um, but DPS does a really nice job of really combining the shape and the construction with an on-trail profile. Yeah. Um, you know, a lot of skiers who spend a lot of time on groomed terrain will really like the precision of this. Yep. And at that thousand dollar, you know, price point, you're gonna get a high quality product. You know, it just feels different than something that's yep. six hundred dollars on the retail wall. Yeah. So, you know, we talked about this before. Is it twice as good? You know, hard to say. But uh, definitely you can you can feel the difference when the, this thing's on your feet. Just um, extremely light and easy to use. Yeah, and I'd add pretty pretty darn nimble too. Oh yeah, um, yeah. You know, there's, edge, I think right the away. tail shape is cool. Uh, quite a bit of taper in, in the tail. Yep. So if you get into the moguls or, or stuff like that, yeah. it's a uh, it's a pretty quick ski, and and the lightweight really helps with that too. Yep. You know, it's similar weight to that Vantage, but a little bit more taper, a little bit more rocker, so it feels a little bit more yeah. playful in, in certain situations. Uh, I think that's a cool way to transition to the Legend X88. Um, Dina Star kind of revamped this ski for, for 2020, but it's largely pretty similar to what it was before. Yeah. Um, definitely some improvements. And what I think is cool about this ski is what I was just saying about the shape of the Cassiar. And actually, the next few skis we look at kind of use a similar shape. Um, but you don't hear this term very much anymore, but people used to call this five-point side cut. I still um, do. <laughs> and yeah, I, I throw that around too. 
you don't it, it's very rare these days to see them list five different dimensions yeah but there's quite a bit of taper in the tip and quite a bit of taper in the tail as well so that really boosts its maneuverability um, but what's interesting about this ski is it's still still got two sheets of metal in there i mean it's still a yeah, stiff it's really stiff stiff burly powerful ski so the way that i think about the legend x88 and kind of how it fits into this category you know, if you're looking for that two sheet of metal ski, you're probably a pretty aggressive skier. You probably like skiing very fast. Yeah. A lot of these skis are geared towards that skier, but kind of focus specifically on carving performance. Yeah. Like I would say the Brahma 88, that shape Correct. is yep. really, really a carving shape. Where this, like I can see myself skiing this and just straight lining and then like slashing big yeah. powerful turns because the edge release is a little easier. Yeah. Um, I think on the other side of the spectrum, so to speak, is having this shape, if you're not that style of skier, it actually helps with turn initiation too. You know, that it's not a full wide tip, so when you tip it on edge, it, it's kind of gradually pulling yeah, you into a carving it. turn, uh, which for some skiers you're gonna like. So. Maybe you're that straight down the fall line and then slash type skier. Maybe you actually need a ski or, or want a ski that's going to help smooth out your carving turn or linking carving turns. A ski like this makes it really easy. Yeah. Um, and because it's got that two sheets of metal, because it's got good torsional stiffness, it doesn't really lack edge grip despite having a shorter effective yeah. edge. No, not at all. I think that thing's going to hold on Yeah. any type yeah. of snow condition. So pretty cool ski. Um, I would say often overlooked in, in the year 2019, yep. um, but a great ski, certainly one to consider if you're looking for that powerful, powerful performance. Yeah. A better looking ski too, I think they did a nice job with the Yep, yeah, definitely, the I, love, I love the new graphics. Um, so, um, Elon Ripstick 88, uh, this is a new ski for 2020, they had the 86 last year and they also have a 96. So they're trying to fit right into the 88 category, and uh, I think they've done a really great job with this. Um, Elon uses that wood core in their tube light technology, so running the length of the ski on the edges are two carbon tubes. Um, the cool thing about that is that they're tubes, so they're three-dimensional. It's not a strip of carbon or yep. a sheet of metal, it's a tube. And so you get, you get that responsiveness yeah, sorry, responsiveness both this way as well as torsionally. Yeah. So when the ski twists, it's going to, the tubes function that way too. Yeah, really um, cool concept. Very cool concept. Um, you know, a pretty nice wide tip, a little, you know, some good taper in the tip. Um, the tail is pretty flat on the tail, looks a lot like the Dina Star. Yeah. Um, not quite as tapered. Um, but definitely is going to hold on yep. um, at the end of the turn. Um, but given its softness, able to release a little bit better. Yeah. So, um, you know, it's a softer tail, a softer flexing ski, but the carbon in there, as well as the shape, uh, give it a really nice uh, grippy personality. Um, the other thing you'll notice about this is it's lightweight. Yeah. Um, so if you're looking for that light swing weight, moguls, trees, tight turning situations, um, this is going to really excel um, as well as, you know, the perfect groomer cruiser for a lot of different level skiers. Totally. Yeah, and I think um, we spent about a half a day with Glenn Plake who helped design this ski and, and really is, is one of the driving forces behind Alon's development right now. And he kept coming back to the fact that skiing is supposed to be fun. What and a crazy concept, right? Crazy. <laughs> so we're, we're, you know, sometimes you feel like other companies are focusing on like, hey, our ski is more torsionally stiff yeah. and holds an edge better than anybody else. Alon's basically just saying like, this is more fun. Right. You're going to have more fun on this. And I had a lot of fun skiing the Ripstick 88. There will, you know, the downside to that, or not a downside, but the other side is, is there will be some skiers who... You know yourself if you wanted to ski yeah. just like 60 miles an hour all over the place this might not be the best choice because it's not the heaviest yeah but super fun super playful still holds an edge pretty well yeah. too uh fisher ranger 92 ti um another great ski fisher really really revamped this whole the whole ranger collection with i think one exception uh the 102 fr for 2020 
Um, and, and I think they definitely improved the performance. They lengthened the metal a little bit in this ski. So the metal actually is underfoot and then kind of extends into this carbon nose. The carbon nose is something that we've, you know, at this point it's synonymous with Fisher's skis. It's yeah. that look is, yeah. is pretty, uh, pretty unique to Fisher. Takes some weight out of the tip, so the swing weight's a lot easier. That carbon nose actually also helps reduce tip chatter yeah. or tip flap. Really gives it a, a pretty poised feel. And what I like about this ski is it, it's, in my opinion, it's got a nice blend of, of characteristics for an all-mountain ski. Um, the tip is, is pretty tailored for soft snow conditions. You know, you get plenty of rocker up in the tip, so if you're... I'm sure it's the most gradual. Yeah, yeah. I think so. Um, and if you're, if you're kind of charging through softer snow conditions, this tip just eats it up. Yeah. Um, but then the tail of the ski is fairly stiff. Yeah. Um, it, it holds an edge really well. So I kind of think about it like you're an all-mountain skier, but you love looking for soft snow, but you still have more of a carving style to your skiing as opposed to a smearing, yeah. slashing style. Um, and I think it makes sense when you look at Fisher's line, if you're more of the smearing, slashing type skier, they got a ski for you. They have yeah. the Ranger 94 FR, which has more of a kicked up tail. It's got less metal, um, but it's a great ski. And I, I think it's fantastically versatile yeah. considering the width, considering the carbon performance um, and, a, and a great overall feel. I think it'd be a, a contender for a touring ski too, which is testament to that skin attachment yeah. point on the tail. Um, so definitely a, a free ride feel, I think a free ride mentality behind this ski, um, but with a, with, you know, a, not a preference for carving, but a, a willingness to carve for sure. It's a successful carver. Absolutely. Yeah. Great ski. Um, that brings us to the Core 93. So we've done a, done some extensive reviews on this as well as its wider uh, brothers. Um, so 93, 99, 105, and they even have a big one too. Um, the 93 though is that, you know, all mountain ski, you know, just kind of like the rest of the skis we're dealing with here. A little bit on the wider side. Um, construction wise, we're dealing with um, no metal. So what we're looking at is a pretty stiff ski for having no metal. So they're graphene and they're choroid and the carbon in here really do all the, they do the heavy lifting in terms of the stiffness and stability of the ski. Um, we talk about the shape as being pretty similar to the Nordica Enforcer 93, um, both with the tip and the tail, the camber profile underfoot. Um, you know, it's pretty free ride oriented, um, but in that narrower package. So the tail's a little bit turned off, turned up, little bit rounded off um, so that's going to help with the smearing um, and with a stiff ski like this but it's light you need you need that help when yep. it comes to smearing turns yeah um, you know again everything's a compromise you dump the weight you might lose some stability at speed so um, you know look for those things when you're you know making yep. a decision about skis um, do I value lightness and quickness over that stability at, and we're not talking like 20, 30 miles an hour fast, right. we're talking real fast. It's more like somebody your size, if right. you're making like super G turns on them at 50, yeah. 60 miles an hour, it can get a little twitchy, Yep. but it's, it's a blast in trees, it's even yep. a blast like at that medium speed range on, on right. groomers, it's a fantastic ski. Yeah, I found it. I had a lot of fun on this skiing at slower speeds, making shorter to more medium radius turns yep. versus a 16.4 meter turn radius. So right at a 180, that that's, supports that's your, pretty short. Yep. So definitely enjoys being turned more than it enjoys going straight. Yep. Um, but again, you know, just a, a successful option from head with this, in yep. this category for sure. And we, we don't have the Enforcer 93 on the wall this year. We have yep. the 88. Um, but we've talked about this before, say you like kind of dial in that this is the shape that works for you. Yeah. What's really nice about the ski industry right now is, is with a ski like this and the Enforcer 93, you can kind of pick the construction that works yeah. for you, which is kind of something we've talked about before. So great ski, really valuable ski to this yeah. wall of, of skis. 
so the K2 Mindbender 90 Ti. Um, this is a brand new ski for 2020, but we've already released a full review of it and the 108 Ti as well. Um, a ton of engineering and development went into these skis. K2 says like the most prototyping and, and just design that they've really ever done into a ski. Um, and I think the, what I think is the coolest concept about this ski and probably the best thing to wrap your mind around is that K2 is kind of tuning the amounts of torsional stiffness in different parts of the ski. So underfoot you've got full width metal, yep. tons of metal right there. In the forebody of the ski the metal is along the edges, which is a concept that other manufacturers are using as well. And then in the tail of the ski, the metal is in the middle of the ski. So when you're driving a carving turn, you get the benefit and stability and vibration damping of this metal along the edge. Um, still plenty of edge grip out of the tail, despite it not having the metal along the edge. So if you're looking to hold carving turns, it'll do it. Yeah. And it loves to be driven. You know, put your, put your shin in the front of your boot and really drive the tip of the ski, and that's where you're going to get the best response out of it. Yeah. But then you can kind of change the way you're weighting the ski, and the tail starts to pivot and it's it's way quicker than you might think it would be. Yeah. Um, you know, this is something that you and I have talked about. It's pretty heavy. Yep. Um, it's definitely one of the heaviest skis on this wall, but it doesn't necessarily feel that way when you're skiing it, and especially if you're kind of focused more on that balanced, like say you're skiing moguls yep. and your your weight's pretty centered, pretty upright. It doesn't feel heavy in that regard. But then when you're driving a carving turn, you kind of get the benefit of a heavier yeah. ski. Um, so really cool skis from K2. I think it's a, it's kind of a unique one on this wall. Um, there's nothing crazy about the shape. It doesn't use tons of rocker. It doesn't use tons of early taper. But the way that they're building and constructing the ski is kind of where you're getting that, that versatile yeah. all-mountain performance. Um, there is a carbon version of this ski too, much like we've talked about before. So if you like this shape, but the construction maybe sounds like a little bit too much for you, uh, there is a, a carbon yeah. version. On the other side of the wall, we'll start with the Kessley MX-89. Um, this is definitely the sports car of the group. Um, you know, again, we're dealing with that higher end price tag. Uh, it doesn't necessarily mean that any Kessley skier has to be a higher end skier. I would say that the MX-89, you should be a pretty high-end skier to yeah. really uh, get, the, get the most benefits out of it. Yeah, to, um, and well, I'll, I'm just going to emphasize that if you ever hear us recommending a ski to a certain ability range, we're pretty serious <laughs> about it, and especially with this yeah, one. Yeah, this thing is, is, is definitely the most business-like business uh, product on the wall. Um, full camber profile, so no rocker. That means that the turn starts here and ends here. So you get a long effective edge, yep. tremendous amounts of stability out of that. Yeah, two full sheets of metal. And I feel like we've all gotten accustomed to skiing somewhat rockered skis, whether yep. tip, tip and tail, full rocker, yep. that we forget what it's like to ski on a fully cambered ski. And what I recall from testing the 84 a couple years ago, was how quickly and easily it hooks up and how cleanly and roundly the turns are. Yep. So you're gonna get the same thing with the MX-89. Um, wood core, two sheets of metal. Uh, the only exception is this Holotech tip, which when they remove the mass from the tip of the ski, it, uh, it, vib it dampens the vibrations. Yeah. So that's their, you know, that's their only caveat to the full-on construction here. Um, but really we're looking at a very stiff, very stiff ski here. Stiff and heavy. Stiff and heavy, flat tail. That thing is going to hook up and it's going to stay in the turn yep. until it's done. Um, that said, it does it better than any ski on this wall um, by a good margin, I'd say, sure. in terms of its pure, round carving performance. Sure. Snap out of the turn. Um, this is a, a very strong performer. Yep. So if you're looking for high speed groomer performance, and you got a thousand bucks to spend. Hard to go wrong with the Kessley MX-89. Yep. Yeah, and I, I don't think you're wrong that it kind of does that better than, than anything else we're talking about. The other side of that, unfortunately, is that you lose some versatility. 
Correct. So yeah. a ski like the Brahma, you know, it's still it's way up there in the power, stability, high speed range, but a little bit more yeah. versatile than the MX-89. Yes. So, Good like you were take. saying, there's always sacrifices. Yeah. Um, so you have to you have to think about that. You know, if, if is the MX-89 right for you? Yeah. Are you are you capable? Of, <laughs> and are you capable? And and is that the performance that you're really looking for? And will he? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, this is a really cool ski, the Liberty Evolve 90. Um, it's only, it almost would be better for Bob to talk about this ski because he talks about this ski a lot. Um, but it's, we'll start with construction because I think it's unique in this ski. They use vertical metal, which we saw from Liberty First in their V series. Yep. So this ski is kind of like if you took the V92 and took the tip shape of like a Liberty Origin mm -hmm. and kind of smashed those things together. So you have that vertical metal technology, which really does a good job damping the ski. It's very impressive. Yeah. Um, but this tip shape, you get 10% 10 10 rocker in the tip, so it, it's much better in softer snow conditions, I find, um, and, a, and a more forgiving feel slightly. Than the VMT. Than the VMT, yeah, or the, the V92. The V92. Yeah. Um, still still a, a relatively flat tail, so it still finishes a carving turn really yeah. cleanly when you want it to. Um, I think it has a more intuitive feel when you're not linking carving turns than the V92. Yeah. Um, you know, it's not, there's no tail rocker in this ski, it's not super tapered or anything like that, but it still feels like it's pretty easy to pivot. Yeah. Um, it's one of those skis that, that feels pretty rhythmic when you're making those pivoting turns. Mm -hmm. uh, you, get, you get good snap back from the ski. Um, and, that just that just gives it a really good feel to go along with the fact that it. You might not expect it from Liberty, but it really is one of the quietest, dampest yeah. skis out of anything here. Um, maybe not the most powerful, but extremely smooth. Yeah, um, and I think that's really cool. I think it. Um, something I said in the written written portion of this this comparison is, some people just like smaller ski companies. Some people right. like supporting kind of more boutique brands. Uh, you know, Liberty is a pretty small company. They're based in Colorado. It really, you know, if, if that if that speaks to you, the kind of small batch production, mm -hmm. that kind of stuff, but you still want a powerful yeah. groomer ski, this is a really good option. And it's that's been kind of a rare thing. Normally boutique companies have like crazy rocker free ride skis right. or something like that. Um, but this is really a, a capable, capable yeah. groomer ski um, and, and just a lot of fun. Yeah, they're tapping into that market that's making these all mountain skis and they're uh, they're doing a great job. Yep. You know, that ban the bamboo in the in the core is a unique wood too. So that yep. you know, that gives it a different feel. Yep. You know, not better, not worse, but certainly different. Uh, Nordica Enforcer eighty eight. This is the narrowest and one of the new enforcers for this year. Um, this thing's pretty awesome. Uh, skiers who have typically enjoyed a Kendo or a Brahma will really like this as well. Yep. Uh, I would put it on the snappier and more energetic side yep. of those two skis. Um, and also enforcer fans, you know, I think that enforcer line is kind of ingrained in uh, ski culture at this point. Yeah, definitely. It's been, yep. you know, five years or so since that first Enforcer 100, well, came back. Right. Um, and they've really just taken that line and expanded it. So the 88 is the narrowest, um, and it has pretty much the same construction, uh, some, some more carbon for some more stiffness, yep. and um, this different tip shape, too. So they've taken... Um, they, ha they don't have the vertical sidewall going all the way around. Yeah, the wood core goes up there. Yeah, the wood core goes up there. The sidewall stops um, a little bit sooner, so that gives the tip a little bit more versatility. Um, you know, on the groomers, it is just ab an absolute blast. You know, yeah. holds an edge perfectly um, all the way through the turn. Incredibly smooth when you're yeah. linking carving turns. Yeah, very much so. Great snap out of the turn. Um, Pretty stiff, pretty heavy, um, but that's again, that's what you're looking for if you're spending the majority of your time on trail yep. carving turns. Yep. Um, and then the trade-off is that you don't get a ton of versatility. You know, not a floater by any stretch. But more than say an MX. More than an MX eighty nine. 
um, you know, and given that enforcer pedigree, it, it does do yeah. that vers versatility really well. Um, but if you've enjoyed, if you've been on an Enforcer 100 and want some more, some more carving power, uh, this thing really lights it up. So yeah. definitely a really strong new addition to this 8890 uh, underfoot yeah, ski. Definitely uh, a, a contender. Yeah. You uh, can kind of, you can tell the skis that Nordic is going after right. with, the, with yeah. the Enforcer 88. But yeah, just a really nice addition and I feel like um, a lot of people are really going to enjoy that ski this year. Yeah, <clears throat> I agree. Uh, Rosignol Experience 88 Ti. Um, this one's this one's back unchanged for 2020, and I, for one, I'm, I'm glad it is. Fantastic. I think it's a really, really valuable ski to have among this category of skis. Um, similar construction, actually, to what we see from Liberty. They use a vertical sheet of metal in this ski. Rosignol calls it line control technology. Mm -hmm. Um, kind of the honeycomb tip that we started seeing in the in the Soul 7 a while back. Yeah. Uh, that has been carried over to the ski. Drastically more rocker and early taper than what we saw in the previous version of the Experience 88. Mm -hmm. um, I think this ski is superior to the ski that it replaced in its carving performance. You might not think that when you look at the shape yeah. because the other ski had really extended side cut and yeah. pretty much all camber, kind of like an MX-89 shape. Yeah, very much like um, that. But that line control technology, by putting that in there, it's it's retained its groomer performance and even improved upon it, in my opinion. But it's drastically easier in trees, in moguls. Yeah. Um, you know, it, it's really a pretty user-friendly ski. And I think I don't want to take anything away from this ski, and I, I can understand the perception when I say this, an intermediate can ski this ski mm -hmm. and have a really good time and it's going to benefit their progression as a skier. It's not too much ski, it's not too stiff, it's not too heavy, it's not too challenging to initiate a turn, but you and I can go ski it as well and we both appreciate its versatility. Yeah. You know, you really can take it anywhere on the mountain and it never feels out of place. Yeah. I think that's probably the highlighting characteristic of this ski is it's no matter where you take it, the ski's yeah. just like, cool, yep, All right, I'll do that. I'm good, yeah. I'm along for the ride, and, and it's going to do a really good job, too. Um, so, really good all-mountain ski, um, definitely a, you know, a huge range of ability levels yeah. can ski this ski, which I really, really like about it, um, and it holds an edge really well, too. So, even if you're high-speed Lincoln carving turns, it'll, it'll do it. Yeah. It's not going to be the same super powerful rock or super powerful damp feel as some of these other skis that we've talked about um, but it, it still carves yeah. a really impressive turn especially like for someone my weight right like i'm not pushing it way past its limits yeah. so it's really fun yeah you don't have to think too much about this it's no a, very intuitive click in and go and yep. it'll go it'll do what you want to do which is uh i think just a, a great quality in a yep. ski like that um, I would say the same thing about uh, the Solomon QST-92. Um, you know, it's a very intuitive, very natural feeling ski. Um, this is redesigned for this year. Uh, the previous QST-92 um, was, I really like that ski. And again, we're looking at a ski without any metal, um, but they're using other materials um, for their stability and damping. Um, so we got some flax, some wood, some carbon, and new this year is cork in the tips, and that really helps dampen the uh, dampen the vibrations. Um, previously, it did not have the cork. Um, the cork adds a little bit of weight, which I think is good. I, I guess my only knock against the old QST-92 is that it might have been a little bit light. That deflected sometimes. Yeah, I would say so, definitely yeah. at speed. A um, little bit different of a shape, um, which is you know, less taper, so a longer effective edge, a little bit more stable. Um, really natural feeling, nice flex to the ski for, you know, for a general all mountain ski. At 92 underfoot, it's a little bit wider than some of the other stuff on the wall. So a little bit more free ride, soft snow oriented. Um, but generally we're looking at this really versatile ski that, um, my fear is that it gets lost in the mix. Sure. Um, 
but there's nothing wrong with it. You know, no, there's really, a lot of great things it about does, it. It's one of those skis that does everything really well. And, um, you know, the changes are improvements in my mind. Um, you know, just a very all around, you know, nice tip rocker, tail rocker, some good camber underfoot, um, but just a very friendly shape and a friendly ski um, that does have, you know, that higher end feel to it that, you know, it's not metal, but it, it's other stuff. Yep. And that stuff really adds up to make um, a consistent feel uh, tip to tail. So, um, you know, the, the, this new QST92 should not be overlooked by people who are looking for maybe, you know, one of these skis on the wider side. Yeah, kind of feels a, a lot like the Ranger 92 Ti. Yeah. You know, it's, it's that all mountain versatility, maybe a preference a little bit towards softer snow conditions or, or skiers that like to get off, off trail. Yeah, definitely. You know, that, that's where it's geared for sure. Yeah. Uh, another Solomon here. It's Solomon's one of the few brands where we we thought it was beneficial to talk about two of their skis, kind of in this width range. Mm -hmm. If the QSD ninety two leans towards that softer snow, uh, this is that same all mountain versatility, but it's leaning the other way. It's leaning a yeah. little bit more towards firmer snow. Um, there is metal in this ski. It tapers as it as it reaches the the tips and tails of the ski. Um, it's not exceptionally stiff by any means, but it's not a noodle of a ski either. Yeah. Um, I really like the, this is, I think, another intuitive ski. Yeah. I think both of Solomon's skis in this width, width Ranger are very easy to click in and go, and it doesn't take, like, a couple of runs to figure the ski out. It's very balanced and yeah. intuitive right away. Right away. Um, it's got a really good feel on groomers. It's not the super powerful ski that we've talked about, but it's got... Strong edge grip, you know, you talked about all those other materials in yeah. there. The same can be said about this. There's a lot going on in the construction of this ski, yeah. and I think that really helps give it good torsional stiffness, good edge grip, a nice round feel when you're linking carving turns on a groomer. Yeah. Um, very energetic in the tips and tails, too. And then this thing is a really good mogul ski. Yeah, um, awesome. You know, it, it, it feels super nimble, super quick yeah. when, you're, when you're kind of pivoting through moguls. That was when we tested the ski two, two years ago for the first time, I think, maybe a year ago. We tested a lot of skis. <laughs> um, but the first time we tested, it was like a really good mobile, like center line at Stowe is one of my yeah. favorite trails because it's the perfect length where I can ski you don't it. Get too tired. I can <laughs> ski it top to bottom and I don't, I don't have to stop. But I, I'll never forget, I don't think, skiing moguls on this ski yeah. and just being like, yep, that's what this ski does. Yeah. Like, it's it's really cool because it has that carving performance, mm -hmm. but then you can hop in moguls and, and just rip rip some moguls. Yeah. So two really cool skis from Solomon, and it, it, it's kind of nice because you can, maybe you're a soft snow, you like that kind of yeah. slashing, smearing, the QST leans a little more towards that. XDR88 feels a little bit more precise, and you get snappier, quicker carving performance out of it, too. And this comes in at 84 as well, so yep. if you're more of that on-trail... Yep. Um, 84 is still really good in pumps, too. Great mobile ski as well. Yep. So, yeah, I'm again, like these Solomons, I'm just a huge fan of how easy and intuitive they are. Yep. Uh, Stokely Stormrider 88. Uh, we've done a full review on this just recently, uh, just recently and um, definitely worth another look. Um, another high end, high you know, high price, but like pretty impressive performance ski. Uh, lighter wood core. This titanium top sheet um, does a fantastic job of absorbing the vibrations. Yep. Um, in our extended review, I noted that because it's the first thing that your, your yeah. boot hits. Yep. So you put your pressure into the boot, goes through your bindings, right into the top sheet. Um, and having that hooked into the metal of the ski makes it initiate really quickly. So the, yep. the precision and the quickness of this ski is very impressive. And it's just smooth, too. It's so smooth. It's unbelievable. You know, that the, the top sheet really does all the vibration absorption. Yep. Um, it's a, just for how light it is, it's just incredibly smooth and stable. Yep. Um, you know, one of the, when you knock and it, there's just not, there's nothing that makes any vibrations in that. Uh, but slightly softer flexing, too. Yeah, a little bit softer the, flexing. The Brahma 88s or the MX-89s. Yep. So you get that, like, 
upper level stability yeah. and smoothness. Um, but I found I could like play around with turn shape a little better on that ski. Uh, <clears throat> very consistent tip to tail too. So it's exactly. you know built the same way tip to tail. So you're what you feel in the tip, you're going to feel in the tail. Yep. Uh, the tail is pretty flared out, so that's going to hold on to the turn. Um, it slight turned up in the tail, so that's not going to lock you in as much as an MX-89 will, um, but still that side cut goes right to the end. So expect a fair amount of control and precision and power coming out of the tail of the ski on this one. Yep. Um, but again, when we're talking about a ski that feels like what it's worth, I would put this Absolutely. You know, right at the top of the list. Yep, you can tell why, why it costs that much. Yeah. It's very apparent when you get on this thing. It's just yep. the, the smoothness and, and stability. I would also, this morning I, I took a quick walk through all the skis. The finish quality on Kessley's and Stokely's is really nice. Yeah. Um, the metal, you, like the metal that you can see under the top sheet of that Kessley is like hand beveled with the top sheet. Yeah. And it's, it's really good. I don't want to take away from anybody else's right. skis, but you can kind of tell. Um, the the level of yeah. craftsmanship that goes into yeah. those and that's where the you know there's got to be a difference for it to yeah to justify earn that the price, price tag so yep. it's you know those are the details so last ski we made it I think this is a really cool <laughs> one to finish with because this ski helped create this category right if it wasn't for the vocal kendo Bob and I probably would not be standing here with 17 different skis in the 90 millimeter range um, and it's cool because this is a brand new kendo. Uh, we talked about it, we did a full review of this yeah. back in the middle of last season, um, but they basically took the new technology of the M5 Mantra, tighten a frame, and they put it in the Kendo. Yeah. So full metal underfoot, or under, sorry, full metal along the base, and then along the top sheet you get partial metal laminates. The end there in these horseshoe shapes, same thing in the tail. Um, and basically what that has done to the Kendo, it's always been a powerful ski, it's always been very damp. Mm -hmm. They retained that. Um, but it has a bigger sweet spot now. Yeah. Uh, it feels more balanced. Um, it's it flexes a little bit more naturally underfoot, which I think where the, that's where that bigger sweet spot is coming from. Um, but it's when you know, when you have the ski on edge and, and you're skiing fast and, and hard, it's still all there. Yeah. Uh, it's really fun. Yeah. Um, they have a new 3D radius this year. So I, I think they always think this is fun. They list 30, 17, 24 as the turn radius. So something that I found, and I would vouch for this, I think you can make a bigger carving turn on the kendo than anything else on this wall. Um, you know, 30 meters is huge. Yeah. 24 is still big too. So if you're not like gas pedaling the ski and unlocking this, this side cut mm -hmm. underfoot, it's gonna make a really big turn yeah. shape. Um, and then the other side, if you're, if you're comfortable driving the front of your boot, and giving a ski some power, you can get it to, yeah. to, to snap right and shorten into these quick carving turns. Um, pretty versatile in, in terms of turn shape if you want to ski off piste, if you want to ski moguls or trees or anything like that. It does it really well. What I will say about the Kendo 88 is there's some weight to it. Yeah. So if you're that style skier, if you want to ski trees and, and moguls on it, you should be comfortable driving a ski and and willing to have a heavier ski on your feet yeah it might get a little tiring but the benefit to that is you get like pretty much endless stability um, so big turn shapes willingness and able to do everything uh, but you need to this is one of those skis where you should probably be at an advanced stability yeah. level yeah um, especially if you're going to do more on it than just cruise groomers right yeah. Probably an intermediate could get get on it and just ski groomers all right. day and they'd have a blast. It would um, be perfectly stable for an yep. intermediate. But if you want to do more than that on it, which yeah. it's certainly capable of, I'd, I'd recommend advanced yeah. advanced ability level. So that's it. Anything to add about the Kendo 88, Bob? Um, just that I wasn't a huge fan of the previous versions. Sure. I just I felt like they were a little planky. You're, you're entitled to your opinion. And I really enjoyed skiing on this thing yep. and more so in off trail situations yep. than I thought um, you know softer snow moguls trees I was pretty impressed with how well this 
handled. I was expecting it to just be more of an on-trail ski. Yep. And um, that new, the new construction really makes a huge difference. Yep. So I'm a big fan of that one this year. So that's it. 17 different 2020 All-Mountain skis. As we mentioned at the start of this, please let us know if you have any questions about a ski that's not up here. Or if you have more questions about a ski that is up here, let us know. Um, we also have every single one of these skis in our 2020 ski test. So there's more results there, more information to read there. Most of these skis we have a full review of as well. Now that I said most, I'm trying to do math in my head. I'm Sorry. pretty, I'm pretty <laughs> sure most of them we have a full in-depth review of whether 2020 or maybe we did it in a previous year and it's a carryover ski. Um, but a lot more information out there about these skis. Uh, I know this was long, so, so thank you for your patience. Hopefully you guys learned a lot. Um, I guess let us know in the comments which, which ski you think would be right for you. Yep. I think that'd be a fun thing to do. Which one's right for you? If you have to choose one. I'd like mount a Rustler 9 forward and make it a park ski or something, but I'm weird. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks, guys. See ya. <laughs>